Welcome to Weld.com. <clears throat> a lot of people have asked me about starting out on TIG welding. What do I do? What do I, what do I work on to get started? And in our classes, uh, you know, again, I've stated this numerous times. It doesn't matter what welding process, stick, MIG, TIG, flux core. We, we usually grab a piece of material, clean it up. And we're getting used to the process. We're getting used to manipulating the torch the electrode holder or whatever, so we run multiple beads. I know it sounds boring, but I'm telling you it's vitally important because you can run them flat, horizontal, vertical, up and down, depending on the process, if it'll run up and down. You can run some overhead. You need to get used to manipulating the torch. And everybody thinks, well, that's a kind of a stupid exercise, just running beads, yeah? Really? You challenge yourself to run really straight lines, you know, put that craft into running really straight lines and making clean, beautiful beads, and then start adding filler wire, repeat that whole thing in all those positions of flat, horizontal, vertical up and down. Uh, TIG would be vertical up, do some overhead stuff because it, it changes, you need to get comfortable. That's a whole spin off off into another video. People have asked me, what do you do to you know, have you ever done anything to really kind of exercise for welding? Think about that for a second. You need to be in shape. I can tell you, I've, I've, had, I've come home from work being in some really strange positions and the old thigh muscles are singing and your shoulders are sore because you've been upside down and getting into some goofy places, you know, maybe some isometrics and some, some uh, stretching and all that kind of stuff would help. This exercise, is just beyond the running bead stuff so we're just going to run a simple fillet weld now the exercise comes down to this i have thin material here eighth inch material carbon steel i've cleaned them up nicely with a with a uh, i put them in the bead blast cabinet and got them all nice and cleaned up no mill scale on either side so the whole exercise is this if i can i'm going to tack these up and I'm going to run a small bead in here. Now the bead really doesn't need to be much more than an eighth of an inch. Okay, that's physically fine. If you get too big with your bead, you will cook the back side of this material. You'll cup it, you'll destroy it, it'll show a bunch of flaky mill scale and stuff like that. It may show some anyway, but at least the integrity of the material is still straight. And I've seen people, they, they weld either too slow uh, too hot, too long of an arc, they're doing some really squirrely things, and I mean just destroy the back side of this. You're pretty much done, and you know it, it's good immediate feedback. Another exercise that comes off of this is you can run an edge weld up here on the edge of this eighth inch or 11 gauge material with filler wire and not blow it up. Okay, so if you can do these things and you can control uh, your electrode angle, your arc length, and your filler wire, then you're on the right start. And from there, we would manipulate things into other joint configurations. We do uh, lap welds. The reason I like to do fillet welds is because we can run multiple beads. We can run one for the, you can call it a root. We run the first one, and we'll stack two more just to build it up a little bit. Again, straight lines. If you're not used to running straight lines, same width, same height, then you're not going to get past this exercise. So j with just a little bit of material, we can make it go a long way and learn a lot of stuff. Now when I do my lap weld exercises in here, I tend to offset the plates slightly. And we can tack on the corners and I'll turn them over and start that weld. If you start out a lap weld, if you tack it up on this side and then you start welding on this side, you, you can get this right here where it draws up off of there and now you've got a big gap. That's never any fun. So, you know, and then if we move beyond that, we can take one more piece and stack it up here and we get a lot of weld area that we can go around. So we try to use efficient use of our material as best as possible. Another exercise is the outside corner joint, we nickname it the poor man's bevel. You can do these with just adding the filler wire and trying to get the proper crown straight consistency. We can add a little bit of gap in them. 
where it welds like a two-pass uh, two weld where we get a root and we have to control the depth of fusion on the back side. Then we come back and run the second bead for a cap, try to get, you know, no undercut on the edges. So there's a lot to do, but just to keep it simple, I want to come in here and want to, we want to start this exercise. Um, a lot of times when we're tacking these up, you can come right down here at the corner and you can, you can get these to fuse together real quick. If they don't, if it looks like it won't jump, the, the weld pool won't jump across to the two pieces, I'll come in here and just put a dot down and then I'll put this, stand this piece up against the dot. You can use a magnet. Uh, there's a couple of things. You can prop a brick up here, a fire brick or another piece of material, anything to hold this steel because you may not get it to tack together just with the arc. You may have to use the filler wire. Let me grab my safety glasses, my hood, my gloves, and I'll be right back. So the first thing I want to do, <clears throat> we discussed a couple of different methods of tacking up. Since I'm here by myself and I don't want to use anything to get in the way of the camera, I'm just going to put a dot on here. It goes like this. It goes like this. When I make my sure I turn my machine back over to DC, that could have been an embarrassing mistake because I never make embarrassing mistakes. So I'm back on DC. By the way, we're using the Everlast DV200, I'm sorry, 200 DV, and I'm running off the 115 volt, not running off 225. So the machine maxes at 125 amps, which is about what I want on this weld, maybe slightly less. I am running 1 16th ER70S6, and I'm using pure argon at about 15 CFH. So I'm gonna put a dot down here to get tacked up. You know, the other thing I've been trying to do for 44 years of welding is weld without a ground. It's never worked yet, but I keep trying to do it. I hope I use the right end of this. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can't get this to jump across real quick. Boom, done, real quick. And then the last thing I like to do is straighten them up nice and straight on there. This may have drawn up where there's a slight gap so I need to pinch those together. I'm gonna to try this end down here without any filler wire to see if I can make it pop across there. Inspect the back side, everything is clean. My tacks are over here. So my first weld I'm gonna do on this side here. We're gonna reposition the camera, one of the cameras and uh, I wanna make this weld over here, so we're gonna put a camera back here and see if we can't get an arc shot of this. So what it feels like here, I'm, I mean, obviously I'm using the foot pedal, but, and I can't see the machine, but I feel like I'm 120 to 125 amps. Maybe the camera girl will tell us. Huh? So I'm using all of what we have set on the machine and that's fine. And I'm gonna go about halfway across there. Clean steel, we got a little color in there. It's good, it's good. Now, the profile of this weld, it's not severely cupped and it's not really convex because I was just adding filler wire on the leading edge. But the most important thing about this is it's same width, same height all the way through there. And I turn it on the back side and my back side is not destroyed. It is a flat piece. So I get to weld over here on this side too. Now I am going to weld on this back opposite of this side and I'm gonna to try to do this way too hot, too long of an arc. I'm gonna slow way down, make too big of a weld. 
just to show you what's going to go on back here. Uh, hopefully it'll do it. So I slowed down with my travel speed. I held a little bit longer of an arc and uh, I put filler wire in like I see some people do, just barely put a dab in. And I put it in kind of on the top side. This thing is washed out. It's like four times too big. It's a big old wicked weld. I've got a little speck of porosity down here in the crater. I haven't even looked at this side over here. I hope it's all messed up. I did it a little worse than I thought I would do it, but that is destroyed. It is bad. This piece of material is like cut in and melted and it's just, you can't weld over the top of that. No way to go back in and clean it. So we just created a really bad situation for ourselves. We can't continue on. So in doing this, you get immediate feedback. Now, there's no point in messing around over here to go over this weld. We're, we've blocked ourselves out of continuing over here, but now I wanna go back in and stack two more beads on our clean side to finish the rest of the good exercise. And then I want to come up here and do one on top just to show you some control. One small bead at the bottom. We're going to continue on and do another one at the top. Ready? So we ran, <clears throat> there's a couple things here to note. We ran one pass down here. We went over here and made a bad weld and I'm sure you can see how that's cooked. Also, it, this is like showing some smoke and stuff, but more importantly, because I cleaned these, this, uh, these coupons in the blast cabinet, you can see a blue line or where the heat is crawling out to. And I just made these continuous welds two on top of each other. So I put three welds over here and it is the same heat ring as this one ginormous bad weld over here. So there's a lesson in how much heat you're pouring into it. Again, straight lines, same height, same width. We practice building beads. We could keep going and add more beads in here. You know, there is another method to do this. Uh, I could come over here on one side and do, you know, we're just doing, holding the same arc length and we're dabbing our material in there. It is possible that when we get further on in our skills that we can set this cup in here and teach ourselves how to wiggle or walk the cup along here and either dab or do lay wire. Again, the main thing to keep hammering home here you don't need to make a great big weld to put two pieces of eighth inch filler metal or eighth inch stock 
your, your weld only needs to be about an eighth inch. So uh, I've seen people that are trying to start walking out or walking the cup. My goodness, they're making a great big ginormous weld and you don't need to. So, you know, you can sharpen, get the right angle and just barely move this thing back and forth and you can make an eighth to a three sixteenths weld that's just fine and it, it pretty much looks the same. Last weld we want to do is we want to come up here on the top and just see if we can't put a weld up here on top and go around all these edges just to demonstrate some control of amperage and arc length and weld pool. So we just got a little bead working up here on top. Main thing is I don't want to blow out the edges. I'm just trying to add and build this up a little bit and keep it the same width as the original material. So again, there's another fun little exercise. You can get a lot of welding out of just two pieces of eighth inch material. You can go to three sixteenths, increase your amperage, increase the size of your filler wire, go to quarter inch, same thing. You can go down, although ooh, things get a little more critical when you get down thinner material. For starting out, I think this is a really good exercise. I really hope this helps, and if you have questions, you got some comment. I have a lot of people that are sending me pictures of stuff they're working on. Again, clean the material, uh, watch your amperage, your arc length, your travel speed. Thanks for watching Weld.com. I'm Bob Moffitt with Cali College.